Hello my book friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. In today's video, I am taking you guys book shopping with me. And this one's a little special because it's in my home state of Florida. When I went to go visit my family last week, I did a little bit of book shopping. What I really wanted to do was take you guys to one of my favorite bookstores in my hometown. There's this tiny used bookstore called the Little Red Schoolhouse and it's so cute and I find so many books there. Unfortunately though, they are closed the entire month of November, so while I was in town for this short amount of time, I went and the sign on the door was like, sorry, we're closed. So I did end up just going to Books A Million, and then when I was in Orlando visiting my husband's family, I met up with my friend Amy from Instagram, and we went to Barnes & Nobles. So I'm gonna just take you guys along with me, and I'll show you what I ended up getting in this book haul. Oh, oh, oh. 
promise that I ever knew I only see you now I only see what's coming so soon So let me show you guys what I got while I was at both of those bookstores. First, Amy bought me, because she's literally one of the sweetest people in the world. I will link her Instagram below, make sure you go follow her. But she bought me Archer's Voice. I've seen this one all over TikTok primarily. This is like a romance book. I think it has some pretty sad elements to it. On the back it says that it's one of the top 100 romance novels of all time time on Goodreads. So I'll just read you quickly the synopsis. I wanted to lose myself in the small town of Pelion, Maine to forget everything I'd left behind. The sound of rain, the blood, the coldness of a gun against my skin. For six months each breath has been a reminder that I survived and my dad didn't. I'm almost safe again, but the moment I meet Archer Hale, my entire world tilts on its axis and never writes itself again. Until I trespass into his strange, silent, and isolated world, Archer communicates with no one. Yet, in his whiskey-colored eyes, something intangible happens between us. There's so much more to him than just his beauty, his presence, or the ways his hands communicate with me. But this town is mired in secrets and betrayals, and Archer is the explosive center of it all. It says that it's a gorgeous tale of survival and the healing power of love. I do not know how R-rated this one is, obviously, because I haven't read it, but I am very excited to read it and see what all of the hype is about. And then Amy also gifted me... <laughs> Mixed Signals. This one is about Layla Dupree, who has given up on love. All she wants is a partner who gives her butterflies, not someone who ghosts her at dinner. Good thing Caleb Alvarez has the perfect solution. After saving Layla from another date gone bad, he has a proposition one month of no strings dating. He'll do his best to renew her faith in men while she rails his dating game. It's a win-win situation but there's one ingredient they haven't considered and that's the chemistry between them is red hot and the urge to take things to the next level is more tempting than Layla's double fudge mocha brownies. So this sounds like a fake dating trope, which can sometimes be a lot of fun. So hopefully this one has some different enough elements that it's not similar to like every other fake dating trope, but I have heard that this author's other books are quite good. So hopefully this one is too. And the rest of the books I bought are of course Christmas books because that is primarily what I was shopping for. I got Meet Me Under the Mistletoe. This one is about a city bookshop owner who heads to the English countryside for a holiday reunion only to face her childhood enemy. She has to dodge an ill-advised former fling. It apparently takes place in a castle, which is one of my favorite bookish settings. <laughs> she finds herself falling hard for the boy she used to consider an enemy and must decide what kind of life she wants to live and what sort of love is worth the risk. This cover is so cute, the story sounds adorable, and so I'm so excited to read this one. And then I kind of accidentally picked up another one by the same author, and I didn't even realize it was the same author till I got home, but I got The Twelve Dates of Christmas. When I was compiling my Christmas book list, this one, like, instantly was one of the top on my list. It's about a girl who lives in this small town, and she signs up for this thing that puts you on 12 dates around Christmas time in the hopes that you find true love, but it says, with each new date more disastrous than the one before, Kate must remind herself that sometimes love shows up where it's least expected, and maybe, just maybe, it's been right within her reach all along. So I'm pretty sure that this is like a childhood friends to lovers type of story, with the mix of all these problematic dates in between, and so I'm very excited about this one, and honestly have really high hopes for it. The next one that I got to break up sort of that romantic comedy vibes for the holiday season is The Bear and the Nightingale. This is more on the fantasy side. I don't know that it's necessarily like a Christmas read, 
but it is definitely that like winter holiday time setting. I've heard so many people rave about this one. So I will be picking this one up when I just need that fantasy fix because that is my favorite genre. It says that it's a beautiful deep winter story full of magic and monsters and the sharp edges of growing up. Just based on all the rave reviews I've seen for it over the years, I'm really excited about this one. And the last book that I got is another Christmas book, of course, and that is Sleigh Bells Ring by Ryan Thane. I have read a couple of her other Christmas books and really enjoyed them, so this was just one that has been on my radar each Christmas, and I am obsessed with this cover. This one sounds very much like an enemies to lovers, that this woman works at a ranch, and the man who runs it or owns it comes and lets her know that they're going to put the ranch on the market. It. So her and her six-year-old twin niece and nephew who just lost their mom, they're spending the holidays there and so they help kind of like fix this ranch up and prepare it for one last holiday season. But of course the man who's about to put her out of a job is probably pretty swoon worthy and so there entails our enemies to lovers part of this story. And like I said, I have read other Ray and Thane Christmas books and though they're not ultra dramatic and heavy on the romance. I have really enjoyed each of them, so I'm looking forward to reading this one for when I want that just hallmark feel-good type of story. And that is a wrap on this book shopping and book haul. If you made it this far, drop the money emoji for the money we spend on books or a book stack or a Christmas tree for all the Christmas reads. I really appreciate you watching, and if you haven't yet but you enjoyed this video, please consider sticking around and hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video.